Hello, uh, welcome to ILA group. Uh, till last video, we saw about like struct and open struct and all those stuff. Today, we'll be looking at one of the most crucial topics in every programming language, I would say is documentation, right? So that's the thing. And um, yeah, let me just explain it to you. So like I will be teaching you how to, uh, what to say, read the Ruby documentation. And I'll also be explaining like how to create your own documentation in this video, right? If time permits, yeah, we will go to this Ruby style guides and all those stuff. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, let's look at documentation right now, right? So uh, Ruby, as you know, contains a lot of stuff like it contains strings, hashes, or what to say, uh, then arrays and all those stuff. And it also contains a lot of inbuilt classes and uh, which this book hasn't covered till yet because like there are plenty of them right so that's the thing and uh, all those things even the if you just install the ruby pro, uh, programming language that comes with plenty of classes inbuilt okay so that's the thing uh, there is a class for float float means numbers with decimal points and there is, uh, you can also represent complex numbers, matrices, and all those stuff, right? So all these things need to be documented somewhere. And it's in this website called ruby-doc, ruby-doc.org. So this is where you can just see. If you go here, yeah, you can just see over here, like 3.11, that is 3.11 core and 3.10 core. So almost all Ruby languages have been documented over here, right? So that's it. So let's go over here right okay and i think uh what do you mean by core api is i think these are all part of the ruby programming language almost inbuilt okay and standard api is like there are some kind of other apis like uh that is like application program uh, program programmable interface like that i think these are also bundled in uh, the ruby documentation i just checked okay so so there is a thing called csv so let me just see whether there is csv or not right uh, i'll just put my irb and uh, right and let me just put like okay require okay and how they have done programs in this uh okay csv right yeah so let me just put this require csv and see whether it's working or not right okay require csv and true yeah so these are all like uh, the core classes in uh that is like the standard libraries like i think like these are also bundled in uh what to say uh the ruby uh, programming language okay so let me to confirm it let me switch ruby version right uh is yeah okay i use a thing called yes package manager called ASDF. like uh, i am a web programmer so like uh, most most of my money till now comes due to web programming so i use this tool called ASDF so that like i can manage my node versions as well as like ruby versions node is nothing but package manager for javascript okay so that's the thing right so uh okay uh how to use ruby i think it's called somewhere you can see something local okay asdf local okay right okay so asdf local ruby 311 right okay should I need to change directory or something like that? Okay. CD, CD minus. No, it's still 3.0. Okay, let me put Ruby hyphen V. Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, it's 3.11. Yeah. Actually, over here, this stuff was showing 3.10. So I just got confused. Okay, fine. Right, okay, so it is 311. So let me just put my IRB and all those stuff. Uh, IRB, right? Okay, so now let me put like this require CSV. Require. 
Yeah, it's just showing like the CSV is showing right at the top, right? Yeah, true. So yeah, uh, 311 was installed recently and no way like I installed some gem called CSV or something like that. So all these things have been included inside this Ruby itself. So you might be using RVM or RBE and yes, Ruby version manager or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it all depends. So that's the thing, right? So I use ASDF, right? So that's the thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me just show you like uh, how to go about looking at looking into Ruby's uh, documentation. So this is the three one one, right? You can just go here, and I think you can just start typing string or something like that. And uh, will it search? Because I had a very very bad experience in searching Ruby documentation before. If that doesn't work, yeah, you can just duck duck go it. Okay, of course use duck duck go than Ruby. Uh, sorry, than Google, because uh, Google tracks you. Uh, duck duck go. They claim they don't track, but we don't know what goes on inside the servers. We really don't. Know, right. So that's the thing. Okay. So this is the documentation for string. So. I've just put it even over here, like, but yeah, like, uh, it doesn't mean that you should only read the string documentation or something like that and all those stuff. Yeah, I put it over here. Th this is the link I've just put for string documentation, right? So that is the documentation for string. And let's scroll some methods and all those stuff and uh, uh, and let's find some kind of method like length or something like that g p h length or let's find a method called size or something why these methods are in there right okay string yeah i am in string and i want to find the length of string and that should be there right okay okay let's try this 2i method okay so oh this i'm just looking in csv i'm really sorry i should be looking at string okay let me find a method called length yeah length is there right so what it says is like yeah you just uh do something like this and just uh you just have a string and then do dot length and it will give you the length of the string so let us try it in irp right so hello dot length and it's fine okay let me type my name like Karthik. yeah it's seven right let me type my kind of full name okay and it's eleven. right okay fine Okay, that's good. So, yeah. So, if you want to know and all those stuff, you can uh, go to Ruby documentation, read it. Possibly, you might have written like five lines of code, and Ruby documentation might have, uh, uh, or to say, uh, uh, might do it in just one or two lines. So, or you might stand to benefit. Like, if code is smaller, it's better to maintain. Like, smaller and readable. Like, it's better to maintain. So yeah, so that's what I just say. Like okay, it's better to uh, what to say uh, have a, a go through your documentation while you're uh, doing initial stages in of Ruby programming. So that's the thing, right? For example, yeah, we'll see this one, right? So we have something like this, and uh, okay, what is this, right? Over here, the documentation is not correct, right? So and it just says string object string and all those stuff <laughs> no uh okay okay s is equal to foo and s okay 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 yeah, yeah. let us try this out okay so s is equal to something like we are just putting something like foo and all those stuff and then what we are just doing is s and double less than and we are just doing bar and all those stuff and it becomes foo bar right so let's what is let's see what is s right whether S has changed or not, right? Oops. Yeah, even S has changed. So S becomes foo bar. Okay, so 
that's the thing so this double lesson kind of concatenates two strings okay and that's how it is right so yeah uh, that's the thing that's the thing so this is how you can search for a documentation maybe let's put array a r r a y right and search it yeah you're getting it over here right yeah ruby 27 ruby 311 almost the same right otherwise yeah if you're not feeling comfortable go for 310 right because now it's ruby 311 right of course 311 has some uh issues with another gem called noko giri and all those stuff so but yeah if you're just learning ruby yeah uh, you can just avoid all those stuff like no need to even think about it i don't think you'll be using noko giri or something like that in uh, while you're starting to do ruby programming so this is how you read ruby documentation right so yeah here i'm just doing the length and yeah it is you can also do it with size okay so length and size are uh, they are same methods like it is just another name given for one method right so yeah it gives 50 with my initials on and all those stuff right so actually yeah it shouldn't be called as initials okay like it should be because initials means it should come initially right so okay yeah so that's how it is right so next we'll see like how to create documentation right so let me put my text mate right text mate and over here why this isn't showing anything okay our doc example no okay this one and in this i've got a thing called r doc example and all those stuff so i've just created a thing called r doc square and all those things this is nothing but a square class okay and i have typed some documentation okay so the name of the square class is r doc square and all those stuff and here i've just put like this class square takes uh takes inside length of type float fix them blah 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 and all those stuff right and uh, the side length is nothing but the side length of the square and uh, area returns the area so that's what i've just put over here and perimeter returns a perimeter that's what i've just put over here so for the class documentation i've just put it just bef uh, uh, before the class and uh, the attribute documentation just before the attribute and the uh, function documentation I've just put before the function so it could be multi-line or it could be single line uh, it all depends on you so yeah this class has two lines of documentation and all this have like half a line or something like that right so that's the thing so how to generate this documentation so let us go here so this r doc square just stays over there so nothing happens so so now we need to generate documentation for that so let's exit right so okay yeah of course i'm in this folder called r doc example right and now all i just need to do is of course this r doc is bundled with ruby right so all i just need to do is to type uh this thing called r doc right and i've just typed it it's analyzing the folder and it just say said like okay it just found one class and all those things one attribute two methods and all those stuff and it has documented so here is the doc folder for you can also put n number of files in this folder right so and uh, this is what has been generated usually you will check the index.html right and if you look over here yeah there is this thing called square and whatever i have just written right what i've written like uh, let me just put it in right and where's text meet right uh text me it goes to the left uh, let me just kill telegram and all those stuff i don't want disturbances right text me it goes to the left so if you just see like okay these lines just okay, let me make this smaller so that like okay it takes me it goes to the left and if you see like okay like this text the same text comes over here and all those stuff and uh, if i click silent actually it, sh it should scroll over here but of course like since it's just a very small window it's not scrolling right and yeah this area is there and i think i can even view source of the area yeah right so over here this is this very same text appears over here so rather than just going through the source and all those stuff 
you can just just from the text itself if the text is worded good enough you can just use use uh, look at the text itself and uh, uh, start using the square class and all those things right um there are two kind of uh, what to say camps in coding right so but ruby has fallen into one kind of camp that is like uh, it's today ruby programmers say like there should be almost no documentation code itself should be so elegant like document it should negate uh, the need for documentation but the thing what happens is like sometimes like uh, a ruby programmer reads a function but uh, of course the function says what it does okay to to some extent and then to understand it he goes inside the source source code of a function and inside that function he calls like another uh, two or three functions so the ruby, ruby programmer to understand that function goes inside those functions and reads it that function might call few more functions and all those stuff so in order to understand a function he just goes into n levels of nesting and uh, to me that's not intelligent so i would say like okay it's better to have documentation like i was a java programmer and uh, i was able to what to say like use a lot of java methods even without looking at its source code and all those stuff but yeah ruby they in ruby uh, they wanted people to look at source code understand the source code and just do it but then that kind of you need to know everything just to do something so that's uh, it's like uh, not having this r doc that is this ruby documentation itself and uh, some people in ruby community telling ruby programmers to go and look at the c source code and saying like they have coded very elegantly so that like <laughs> we can see the c, c source code and understand right uh, and that's that's kind of uh, very very bad and uh, very rude i would say so i would say like okay if you are a good programmer you must also be good at documenting what you have done uh, documenting your stuff means saying to the world that look i know it so well enough i have documented it uh, uh, a programming is nothing but a scientific venture and if you look at science almost every great discovery no matter how smart it is unless and until it's been documented or published outside published uh, well enough to uh, well enough the outside world won't credit you but somehow programmers want everybody else to understand that is at least other programmers to understand them and uh, to credit them so that i just find very very silly right so i would say documentation should also be uh, a part of every scientific end endeavor which also includes programming programming is also a scientific endeavor right so that's what i would say and uh, yeah to experience ruby programmers yeah i might be a little bit annoying but yeah look look i'm i myself a ruby programmer i've been coding in ruby nearly 13 14 15 years i i don't know like i'm not sure right but yeah, like I really feel like there should be documentation, right? And uh, yeah, uh, apart from that, nothing. Uh, so yeah, this is how you document your classes. And before I told you how to go and search Ruby documentation and all those stuff, right? So that's the thing. So if you have any doubts in Ruby, search for Ruby documentation. And only if you are unable to find your way out, do ask in Ruby forums and all those stuff, right? So that's it. I hope this video was useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.